are the Tribulation Saints. This is very important. When did the message of the kingdom of God come in to the world? Now we know that it was promised way back here to Abraham. Abraham got the original seed promise. That seed promise contained the Messiah, the coming kingdom, salvation, forgiveness of sins, and all the promise of eternal life was in that little seed promise that was given to Abraham. So Abraham got it first, and then all the prophets prophesied until John the Baptist. Luke chapter 16, 16, Jesus says the law and the prophets was until John. And what that means is that it was just the law and prophets. Once Moses gave the law, right here, when Moses gave that law, and it continued until John the Baptist. Now what we have here is John the Baptist before Jesus. Now we have the cross and we have a seven year period, three and a half before he dies and three and a half after he dies. Now that talks about a seven year period because that's the last week of Daniel's prophecy before Israel's cut off. You have to understand that Daniel's prophecy has to do with this seven year period right here. Jesus' ministry was only three and a half years. Same as the Antichrist ministry in the book of Revelation, he's given three and a half years. That's very important, we'll talk about that later. So Jesus' ministry right here for three and a half years, Jesus was clearly pre preaching the kingdom, the kingdom message, right? So, when did it start though? The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom is coming, the kingdom is coming. Jesus preached the kingdom right here for three and a half years, okay? The kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom. Now, John the Baptist began preaching the kingdom of heaven. I'll go K kingdom of heaven right here. K-O-H, kingdom of heaven. John began preaching it before Jesus. Before Jesus, okay? Luke 16, 16 says that the law of the prophets was until John the Baptist. And that means it was only the law and the prophets until John. Once John starts, he starts preaching the kingdom, getting the way for Jesus, making the way for Jesus to preach the kingdom, right? So John starts preaching the kingdom, and then Jesus begins preaching the kingdom. And let's take a look at this. Kingdom, kingdom, right? Kingdom of heaven. Jesus actually preaches both the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. Jesus preaches both. As a matter of fact, Jesus preaches the kingdom of God more than he preaches the kingdom of heaven. In Matthew, he preaches the kingdom of heaven 33 times. In Luke, he preaches the kingdom of God 33 times. And then he preaches more about the kingdom of God. So it's the same kingdom because Jesus told his disciples to go preach the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, and he told them to preach the kingdom of God both, right? So it was, a, it was the same message, okay? Now, the law and the prophets were until John the Baptist, and then we see the kingdom being preached, the kingdom of heaven by John the Baptist, preparing for Jesus to come in to preach the kingdom. And then we'll talk about how it transitions into the apostles, and then Paul, Paul eventually gets that over here, right? And the apostles have it right here, okay? Now, let's slow down. The Law and the Prophets until John the Baptist, here's John, and then the Kingdom of Heaven is being preached right here. The Kingdom of Heaven, it takes off like this, we're going to get to that line in a second. John finishes it off, baptizes Jesus, Jesus is baptized, Jesus is baptized right here, and then Jesus begins preaching the Kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God both. He told his disciples to preach the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God, and Jesus preached the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of his Father, and said it's my kingdom, and said this kingdom, and it's, it's got five or six different names, it's the same kingdom. There's one kingdom that's coming, look at this. The kingdom is coming until we get to the millennial kingdom, that's a thousand years, 
of Jesus ruling and reigning on the earth. And then after that, we have the kingdom forever. Then the kingdom is forever. Kingdom is forever. So we have it begin. It's beginning to be preached right here with John the Baptist. Right? Jesus gets baptized and he preaches the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. At his baptism, he begins to start his three and a half year ministry. Daniel's prophecy is coming to an end. Daniel's prophecy comes down like this. I'll show you how Daniel's prophecy ends at some other video. We don't want to, I can't make this too messy. What I'm trying to do is show you how the kingdom of heaven is being preached, where it comes in at, where it starts. Starting with John the Baptist, starts right here with John the Baptist. I think it's Luke 16, 16. The law and the prophets are until John the Baptist. Then the kingdom of heaven is preached with John until Jesus is baptized. Jesus begins preaching the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God, tells his disciples to preach the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. It's the same kingdom, it's just got two different names. So it's like if you call me a man, and then you call me a guy, and then you call me a fella, or you call me a dude, or you call me a, you know, a stranger, an hombre, compadre, whatever, you call me these different names. I'm, it's the same me, I'm the same person, right? So the confusion comes in when people start breaking it up and calling it different kingdoms. That's a, that's a big deception. Be careful about that. So the kingdom of heaven is being preached right here. And then what happens is it starts right here with John and then it's handed over to Jesus. And then after Jesus raises from the grave for 40 days, 40 days, he talks to his disciples about the kingdom of God and tells them to go tell the whole world. And so the apostles start, Peter is basically to the, to the Israel. Peter sets the stones for the Gentiles. And then Paul comes along, does some Jews, and then goes to Gentiles, mostly. Paul's mostly to the Gentiles. He does some Jews. And then Peter does mostly the Jews but sets the groundwork for the Gentiles. Peter was the first one to convert the, the Gentile world. Peter was the preaching the same kingdom message that started with John the Baptist, which is basically repent. Turn away from your life and turn to God. That was the basic beginning fundamental steps of it. Turn to God. Jesus comes along and says, believe in me and repent from your sins. And he talks about his death, burial, and resurrection 15, at least 15 times. Jesus says he's going to die and raise from the grave about 15 times to his disciples because that's the foundation. The foundation is his death, burial, and resurrection, the blood atonement. He gets over here after he raises from the grave, comes back from the grave. He talks to his disciples for 40 days about the kingdom and reminds them and, and tells them about the prophets, tells him about his death, tells him their eyes were opened. Their eyes were opened. See, over here they didn't see, over here they did see, over here they did see. Over here, Jesus is speaking in parables and secret sayings, over here they understand all of that. Over here, Jesus wasn't uh, calling the whole Israel, the whole Jewish nation. He went to the house of Israel, but for the elect, because God was going to blind the nation. God was going to blind the nation when Daniel's prophecy comes in. Daniel's prophecy came in like this and ended right here at the end of this last week. It ends and Israel was cut off. Israel was cut off and then the Gentiles got the message through Paul. Now Jews were still saved, part of the body of Christ, but mainly Israel as a nation was cut off. When Daniel's prophecy came to an end, Jesus was transitioning into the new. And you got to see this crisscrossing effect that takes place or you won't understand it. If you think everything started right here at the cross where Jesus died, basically he confirmed a covenant in the middle of the week. He confirmed the covenant of Jeremiah 31, 31, I think, the covenant. The covenant was confirmed through Jesus. In the middle of the week, he confirmed the covenant and he stopped the sacrifices of the animal system. Now in the book of Daniel, there's four times the animal sacrifices were stopped. Three of them are the Antichrist and one of them is Jesus in Daniel chapter 9. That's another video. What I'm trying to tell you here is where did the kingdom message begin? Where did it go and transfer and how did it get to way over here to where the Gentiles are now hearing it through Paul? What you have to understand, when Paul says it's my gospel and he said I was he had a revelation 
Of course he had a revelation. He was killing Christians. Paul was killing Christians until Jesus came to him and revealed to him what these guys already knew. The 12 apostles got the information first. Paul was killing those apostles. So when Paul says, I had a revelation, God came to me and God told me, and it's my gospel, he gave me a dispensation to go preach to the Gentiles. He's taking that same gospel message that Jesus was preaching to the 12. He was taking that same message by revelation. By revelation, he was taking it to the Gentile world, okay? So Paul says, my gospel, my gospel, my gospel. He also says, our gospel, three times as well. He says, our gospel. And so it's not a different message. It's not a different message. It's the same message. The prophets prophesied right here that this day was going to come. The prophets prophesied that Jesus was going to come, right? Abraham was the first one. Galatians chapter 3, verse 8. Abraham was preached that through his seed the Gentiles would be blessed and all nations would be blessed through Abraham's seed. So it's Abraham's seed, the prophets are prophesying, the law and the prophets until John, and then what we have here is a little bit of time where the law is left. This part can be confusing to people because the law didn't stop here. Let's notice this line right here. The law actually continues the law comes to an end at the cross. Now that's something that happened at the cross. The sacrifices ended from the animal sacrifices, the jot and tittle and ordinances of the Mosaic and Levitical dietary laws, washing rituals. It all came to an end here. And then we start with a brand new message that goes right into the kingdom, right? So we got a couple of starting places here. It started being preached by John while under the law. And then... It, Right here, there was no more law, just the gospel message. So the gospel, the kingdom be, was preached right here with John the Baptist and Jesus to the Jews only. But first, all right, so the gospel message right here that started with John the Baptist and then picked up by Jesus was to the Jews only. But that was only until Daniel's prophecy finished. When Daniel's prophecy came to an end, right here, and the Jews were blinded, then that same message that was to the Jews only went to the Gentiles. Went to the Gentiles. Now, of course, there were some Jews saved during this three and a half year period. Probably you got Cornelius's family, Peter on Pentecost, the proselytes. If you look up that Greek word proselytes in Acts chapter two, that's, that was Gentiles who heard them speak in tongues. So the Gentiles could have very well been saved, beginning to be saved in the body of Christ at Pentecost. But we know Cornelius' family, when Peter went to preach in Acts chapter 10, they spoke in tongues. Yeah, they spoke in tongues. Cornelius' family, Gentile family, spoke in tongues. Some people will tell you that they didn't get receive the Spirit the same way. That's not true. They received the same Spirit as they did on Pentecost. The Gentile family, Cornelius' family, spoke in tongues just like they did at Pentecost. Acts chapter 10, if you want to verify that. Now this looks a real bit messy, but really what we have is a kingdom message. It starts with Abraham, promise, goes through the law and prophets through Israel, and it's to Israel only right here. But Daniel's prophecy says they have 490 years or 70 weeks to get to make an end of transgression. Jesus ended transgression. Jesus brought in everlasting righteousness. What you have to understand about the kingdom is that it has different phases and different components. Like I have a physical body and I have a spirit. Well, the kingdom is very much similar to that. That the spiritual kingdom came in right here. The spiritual kingdom came down with the Pentecost of Holy Spirit. We have the spirit in us. We have the kingdom in us. But there's coming a time when the physical kingdom will come down on the earth. Now some people will tell you one's the kingdom of God, one's the kingdom of heaven. That's completely not rightly dividing. There's one gospel message, there's one kingdom message, and there's one kingdom that's coming. The Jews and the Gentiles will be part of that kingdom together 
even if they have different functions and even if God still has something he's going to do with just the Jewish nation and the end times. That doesn't mean anything. I have a foot, I put a sock on my foot. I have a hand, I put a glove on my hand. My hand and my foot, I treat differently. I don't put a glove on my foot and a sock on my hand. Why, do, why is that? It's part of my body. It's still part of my body, but I have different things that I do with different parts of my body. Israel has a specific thing that God's going to do with Israel, even though we're still part of the same body, same bride, same kingdom, right? Same children of God together, different nations, different functions, many members of the same kingdom. So I'm going to go over this again more and more with you. I hope that this wasn't too confusing because this is my first time putting it on the board and I'm learning all this with you as I go and study myself. So hopefully in the future we'll be able to uh, make this even more comprehensible and understandable. Hope this helps clear up some things. If you have any questions, ask below the video. But this is the proper way the dispensations crisscross and the, the kingdom message comes in and the gospel message begins and continues. The gospel actually started over here with Abraham. Abraham got this gospel. Paul is bringing it to the Gentile world. It changes hands right here from Jesus, apostles, and Paul, uh, Jesus, Peter, Paul, John, Jesus, apostles, Peter, Paul, however you want to look at it. This is where it began. Jesus began at the baptism. John began right here. The law continued until it was finished at the cross. So there was a time when the law was in place and Jesus was preaching a new kingdom. That's why you'll see Jesus tell him to keep the jot and the tittle as well as obey everything about the law. It hadn't come to an end yet. Daniel's 70-week uh, prophecy hadn't finished yet. So that's confusing to a lot of people. And we can clarify and teach on that and help you understand how this double period is crisscrossing and, and overlapping one another right here in this little area right here. But right after the cross, there is no more law. It's just the kingdom message. And that's why we got the grace kingdom going here even though it started with John, it was only to the Jews first. Don't forget, when it started with John the Baptist right here, it was only to the Jews until Jesus rose from the grave. That little time period, the three and a half years of Jesus' ministry and whatever time John was doing that right there, that was all to the Jews only. Jews only. Jews only, right here. But then Jesus says it even in his own words that it was to them first. Let them be filled first. Right? And then that same message, Jesus, for 40 days, Jesus tells his disciples several times on several occasions, go tell them about this gospel. Right? Matthew 24, 14, Jesus says this gospel, Matthew 24, 14, this gospel will be preached to all nations until the end comes. This gospel, Matthew 24, which gospel? The one John the Baptist began preaching. The one that Abraham learned was prophesied that all nations would be blessed, all nations would be saved. That gospel began here to the Jews only and then gave to the apostles which were the foundation of the church. And then eventually Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 8, he was last, 1 Corinthians 15, 7, 8, that he was last to get the revelation. And it was his message he was taking to the Gentile world. So that's why he called it my gospel. It's my gospel too. I'm bringing you my gospel right now, which is this gospel. My gospel, what Paul said, was this gospel. And Paul calls it this gospel many, many times. He calls it our gospel many, many times. So don't let them confuse you on the internet. This is how it works. And it's an everlasting gospel. It's an everlasting kingdom kingdom in the millennium once that ends the final judgment takes place and then it continues forever and ever and ever and ever and ever in righteousness and uh, come to our live streaming on the weekends saturday and sunday we live stream on the weekends and you can ask questions there and study with us i love you guys so i love you guys i'll see you in the next video god bless you peace